I'm really happy to be here. So uh, today I'm going to talk about unleashing the potential of organized files in Sigma. Yes, I am the team that will name every layer. I'm so sorry if you're not, but I am. Uh, so today I'm going to try to convince some of you that this is a good way to go with our files. And I'll try to bring some tips and some ideas that I've learned along the way. And I hope you enjoy. OK, so I think we can go to the empathy side so, so you can know a little bit about me. Uh, so I'm Larissa. I'm a product designer. I really like design systems, as you can imagine. Uh, I like design ops. I work as UX and UI for a while now. I've been to more than 10 projects, different projects with different types of um, companies. And just about myself, I really like coffee. I think everyone here likes coffee. Uh, but I recently started roller skating, and I'm in the phase that I'm learning how to fall. So it's, it's really good. It's been amazing. Uh, I'm a book addict. I really like to read books, not just about design, but as uh, fictional as well. And I really like playing video games on my, my spare time. So. Okay, so some of you are thinking like, why is this even top important? Why do we have to name my layers? I've always done as I do, and I don't really need that. But I'm here to convince you that it is important. So the first thing that we have to say is that your files being updated can bring a lot of benefits for you and for your team. Sometimes we work as a solo designer and sometimes we work really with a huge team and small team. There is a lot of type of company, but keeping it updated can help you a lot when talking about long projects or even projects that you're going to have to maintain in the future for yourself or for other designers. It's always going to be easier to edit when the layer is named header instead of frame 2000 whatever. <laughs> so it seems a little bit obvious, but when we have picking up any projects from other designers or even for our old selves, we're going to have to encounter some types of difficulties when try trying to edit stuff. So keeping files updated and always easier to edit is going to bring a lot of time uh, less time doing that and more time really working what it matters, right? And of course, I'm a huge fan of standardization. Uh, I think that standardization doesn't mean that you have to lose your personality as a designer. I think sometimes we confuse that mean like, oh, now I have to name all the layers and they're going to be all Heather. What's my personality into this? It's not that we can say the file is from this person or that person, it means more keeping standardized at a point that I can enter the file and I just understand what's going on there. So I'm going to bring three topics that I think it's important for us to tackle before talking about real standardization. The first one is naming conventions. So naming conventions can be really boring for some people, and I understand. Uh, but they are going to have to be logical, scalable, flexible, simple, and they have to be standardized. I brought three ideas that you can use. Normally, these conventions are used in development. We can kind of steal that as well if you want. Um, you can use these name conventions to name anything. We're going to talk about folders, files, and layers especially. Components and properties are a little bit different. But you can use this to standardize your files and to understand how the best way that all everyone involved on that project can use. And it, it is not weird, no? The second one is design library. We have a big difference, difference that is design library is related to design and design system are related to design and code. What does that impact in our daily life? Uh, lives, right? So what I brought here is just this design systems.com. It's really generic website, but it has like a really good set of design systems for us to look. Some has the code evolve it, some doesn't. Uh, but in general, it's really good to bring this because I think one of the most impacts that we're gonna feel in our work is even our, our design library, our system is outdated. 
it can confuse and cause huge inconsistency with development, with other teams, and it can cause like a waterfall of problems in the future if you don't keep that updated. The third one, I think, is the most hard one, to be honest, that you have to talk and discuss with everyone, and it can cause all your problems. So since starting working at the pandemic, I think a lot of us started to talk with people from all over the world. And this is not a bad discussion, like it doesn't have to be a fight, but you have to reach an agreement between everyone involved in the project that this makes sense. I already worked in projects that it doesn't make sense for one person and it can become a huge problem because every time that I got to that file, I have to see all the things that are different from what I do. It's not wrong or right, it's just you have to reach an agreement and discuss about it to understand what's the better way that this thing can work. Okay, but I understand that and where all of this fits into the designs, really. So let's start with Figma folders. Uh, there are a lot of ways, and all that I'm bringing here is more like tips for you to do. It's not something that you have to do. But organizing our files a little bit between archives and active clients, for example, is a way that you can bring a lot of value. Let's pretend that we have a new designer in the team, and they open, and we have like, this is file one, this is file two, this is, you know, like what's this about? So every time that you open your team, normally this is on your team, you can see like, okay, client C is archived, whatever the reason, but it's archived and it's here and I can see really quick. And the intention is to reduce our learning curve on understanding folders, files or whatever it is since our job is more focused on creativity process and everything else, instead of trying to guess what's in, inside of each folder. The second thing, I think we have files and we have branches. Branches, I think it is like a recent, not so recent feature of Figma, but branches will be always a good thing, but not all companies have the budget to, to do it. So I, I thought it was valuable to, to try to bring files here because we can make a lot of stuff files like this. So what we can do is just signalize to who is entering that this is playground, that is design system, the other one is resource. So I can have a lot of type like in brackets, just name it, really simple that you can let other people on the team or a product manager, a client, whatever, whoever is entering the, the Figma, that this space is for playground. So if you see anything here, probably it's not ready. <laughs> Don't mind, it's a work in progress. So you can avoid a lot of things like hundreds of comments on something that's not finalized, for example, because the name says that it's a playground. We have another feature in Figma that's really cool that we have the pin like uh, up there. So the pin is just to make it easier to find like really handy things. So if I'm always working on the playground, I can just pin it and it is there. It's always there for me. It's the same right there and, uh, and up there. But anyways, you can make it a little bit easier. Branches, I know, are a little bit of scary things because when we have to merge something and everything's kind of messy, it can create a lot of uh, difficulties when merging. But branches can be amazing if you are working with larger teams, for example, and you have a lot of people involved. What I'm going to bring here is that we can use branches for a handoff, we can use branches to um, between designers, and it's really up to each team how the branches are going to be used. But I think it's important that we can use branches uh, related to designers, to features, to teams. What is better for that company or that team? But branches can always be named as the ticket, for example. So once I start working on some ticket, I can just name it. And it's really easy to get approval because everyone will be in the same page when looking at the name of that bridge. The other thing are pages. Pages, I think it's really fun because you can put emojis and you can make more like, okay, it's design friendly, you know? 
not like that folder. So I think pages are a little bit more organizational, but it can be more personalized. So here, what I brought is just an idea that we can think about structure for pages. Since each project and each company has its own way to work, sometimes the playground is going to be here with the devs, sometimes it's going to be separated, sometimes it will be in branches. So the only thing that we can make here to make a little bit simple is just naming correctly. So when I enter a file and it's like page one, page two, page three, I don't really know what it is inside of that. And until I found it, it can take a while. So it's going to be easy if, if you can name it, name it. I just brought two ideas and sometimes I even use like the divider with an empty page just to make like a separation of things. But it's something really that your team and you is going to have to take a look and see the best approach, but always keep them named. It will be a little bit easier. I think components and properties will be the most impactful thing that you're going to do in your designs. And I always, I, I'm always like talking with my colleagues and try to understand the best way to do it. Uh, even like on working with clients outside Portugal, outside Brazil, outside anywhere that you are, it's going to have different words to name things. So sometimes it is, I don't know, organized with a Z and organized with an S, and it can change everything. So it's really important to understand that components, naming properly their components and properties will be like a game changer. Now bring an example. So Figma has an amazing way to organize uh, properties and components because we have, a, I'm going to show you, I think it's easier. So we have um, an example here. I don't know if you guys can read it. I hope so. But in general, it is. Every time you use a slash in the middle of the name, it will create a category, meaning that every time that I have to publish a library, I can name, for example, here, internal use, the slash, and then I'm going to name the property that I want. When I publish that library, it's going to create a little category for me that everything that has internal use, the slash, is going to be inside that category. So meaning that every time that I have to find something, or for example, I have to find buttons, I have three different components for buttons. Everything is inside the category of buttons. So I don't have to search like, oh, sometimes it's link button, sometimes it's, I don't know, any type, fat button. I don't know what the name that the other person gave. So it's going to be really hard for me to work with the library. And probably I will create another one. And that will create a lot of inconsistencies every time that you create something. So my idea here was to really bring to you guys that it's really important to keep the categories with the right name, the name that was agreed on. Uh, and keep everything on your design library. So as I, as I told you guys, can we detach something just for this page? I'm never going to do it again. I'm just going to do it in the page. Of course not. <laughs> I even see there is a little sticker on the, on the echo bag. I'm really happy about it. Uh, so what I want to say with this is like, of course it will happen. Your library is alive. So every time you have to create something like, let's pretend that I'm creating a card and I needed to display the price and then suddenly it doesn't have the price. So what do I do? I detach, I create another one and I go on with my life. Actually, the process should be, yes, I have to detach it because I'm gonna to have to create another one or I can go to the library and create another variant there's a lot of ways that you could do, but your library should always be updated. Let's pretend that I entered this project and the card with the price is there in page 28. So I try to find it. I can't find with Control F because there it is not named. And I have to do a card with the price. Uh, probably I will create another one because I didn't find. So I'm going to pass to developers the other one. I'm going to pass new guidelines for other one. And this can create so much inconsistency a long time. It's going to be really hard to go back and erase everything and decide what's the right one and what's the wrong one. 
we have three types of properties that I think can be named at, as well. We have Boolean, we have tax, and we have swap. The tree works with different properties. So one is show and hide, one is to edit text easy, yeah, you, the other is to swap. So I can swap between components more easily. But here, I think the idea is when I put the same, uh, all this type of properties inside a component, what will happen is that Figma will ask for another name because if everything is the same name, probably it's going to cause confusion. So I brought some ideas that we could name that. So for uh, Boolean, for example, we could like show right button or show left icon. We could uh, make it really easy that you see the properties, the long list of properties probably, and you're going to see show it is Boolean. The second one is for placeholders. Uh, you can say uh, the name of that property can be like text right, text left, text top, text bottom, whatever you feel it's needed. But placeholders sometimes is something that you are not really sure what's going to go. And it can be like placeholder for text button, placeholder for a link button, or anything like this. It can be a really good name for you to find it. And the icon, I think normally, uh, I all the cases that I've studied, normally it is used for icons. So I have to swap some icon in a button or in a card. And you can use like the name of the thing and then the swap version. So what I mean is that icon swap, it can be a really good name, icon right swap. So you always know that you're referring to the right or to the left. But it, it's easier because if I just say icon and there is like four of them, which one I'm changing, right? And the last is what caused more fights between designers, I think. <laughs> but Figma gives its own nickname if every time you create a, thing, a frame. So if you hit F, it's going to create a frame. It's going to give like, I don't know, what number you are, probably thousand of something. Um, but it's really important that you go back and name at least the big group of the frame. If you don't want to like name every rectangle you put, I got it. It's okay. But I think it's really important to name at least the top priority because it will look more like this. So what we can have is if you name it at least the first layer, it's going to be a little bit easier for you to understand what you are using. Like I'm click on something, what's that, right? So it's going to be frame 2050. So OK, what's frame 2050, right? So if I have names, normally I use the place and the function. Or what is it? So the examples that I brought here, I don't know if, if you guys can read it, but on the left, I have top header and menu for service and profile menu, for example, that's the function. If my team agree that the function is more important than the placement at this time, it's okay. It's just a way to show that every time I click here, it's menu for service. The, the right, it is uh, more like the, the placement. So I have header, I have left menu and right menu. Sometimes you are not sure what menu that menu is about. So you can easily use like the location instead of just letting the name that frame create that Figma created, just because it is like, oh, I'm not gonna use it in the future, and then you add them to the library and it's still the same name. And probably you're gonna publish with that name. So I think it's important to go back and at least the parents of that frame should be named. So I understand that you guys are thinking like, OK, my project is ongoing. I'm not going back to every frame that I have and rename it. I get it. Uh, I think there are a lot of approaches that you can start. I think the first one is setting a naming convention. It doesn't have to be like for folders, files, layers, and et cetera. But at least for properties, components, and layers, I think it's a good start. Uh, you can start at least talking with your team the structure of what's going to happen. 
I think the same way that development do in architecture, I think we should do it as well. We should understand with our team what's the best structure that we want to follow along if this project goes bigger, if it goes smaller, if I don't use a feature anymore. I should at least look at my files and understand directly what I am uh, what I am designing, where I am designing, how I can make this scalable in the future. The second thing that I brought, I think every time you design something, you don't have to go back to everything. You can just name it from now on. So you can start by naming now something that you are designing. It's just Ctrl R. I swear it's not hard. <laughs> So I think it is good that you can name at least what you're doing right now. So when you pick that up again, probably it will be named. The second thing is that card that we detached and never look back. Please look back and put it in your library. I think it's going to help you a lot in the future. And it's going to help future designers on that project to do it as well. So when you design or create something from now on, you can start by putting it in your library and updating that component that is with their own name. Or even we gave like the name menu for services and suddenly it is menu for, I don't know, for insurance. So it's not that name anymore, but everyone that the team know that menu for service is for something else, you know? It's just a verbal agreement that now you can document and really keep your library updated. The other thing is that Figma has this amazing feature that descriptions. Every time you add something to your library, you can publish with a little description. So it's really good if you don't want to do all the documentation, it's fine. But at least if you add a description and say like, this minimum width is this, or this is supposed to be used like this, it can help future designers to understand why that was designed that way and can reduce a lot of problems. And with that, of course, it's going to be amazing, but I understand that we don't always have the time, is adding documentation to your design library. I mean, really creating a frame and putting guidelines, spacing, all of the things that could help us and developers in the future to design that exactly as we planned. And of course, you have to have patience. So it's of course you're not gonna go now home and you're gonna rename everything it's gonna be everything organized it's my dream actually but it's never gonna happen but i think it's important that we always have patience not everything will see value in that not everyone will see value in that and not everyone will want to do that but i think that if we can do a little bit just for ourselves at this moment and understand the necessity of others designers and developers we can create a really good library like a document and, and even for portfolio, like you don't have to show just the final, you can show all your process. So this is part of the process. And I think that sometimes those designers are so focused on the creativity part that we forgot a little bit about the process. And I think it's really important because it will make your, your work and your portfolio really rich if you show that you have all the knowledge that you need to be to do scalable designs, to do uh, bigger, to work in bigger companies. So I think it's really important that we can think always to have patience and talk with others and understand how we're gonna do it and just make a plan to start. And that's it. <laughs>